Hello and welcome to Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. If you don't know what this is, it's an incredibly in-depth CRPG and it's the follow-up to Pathfinder Kingmaker. By follow-up I mean it's not a direct sequel but is sharing a bunch of mechanics and a bunch of ideas from the previous game, which is fantastic because the previous game was an amazing journey and I'm hoping that this one will be the same. If you want to see character creation, there should be a video already out for that, and we went over the rules a little bit, but the long and short of it is that we're going to be playing in Inquisitor, and that we're going to be playing on the core rule set. So, without wasting any more time, we're going to jump right into the game. Make way, coming through, fetch a healer, quick. Hey, somebody! We got a wounded fighter. Can we get a healer over here? My, my, would you look at this. But why would you drag a wounded fighter into the middle of the festival square? Couldn't she be carted off somewhere else like, oh, I don't know, an infirmary? Or an accommodating ditch? I'll find you an accommodating ditch. Make room, everyone! Step back! Now, what's the matter? What happened to her? The wound looks nasty. Who did this to her? I'll, I don't know who did it to us, but I know that once we know who it is, they're not gonna live for very long. Demons, prelate! We found her barely alive outside the walls of Canabris. The walls, you say? Enemy doesn't usually stray so close to the city. Must fortify the defenses. And you, hold fast. Don't die. We'll see you right. I like how he made that an order. Don't die. You know, otherwise we might have considered it. We'll get you patched up now. But first, you there, guard. Take her weapons. Bearing arms is not permitted during the festival. Wounded or not, everyone must abide by the rules. She can get her things back after the festival. Oh, inheritor, leader of our troops, the sharpened edge of our blades and the unyielding strength of our armor. Iomade, I beseech you, grant your mercy. Heal her wounds. I won't give up that easily. Here, here. That's the Crusader spirit. My powers are not enough here. Someone call for Terendalev. You there. Yes, you. Stop dithering and gawping and make yourself useful. Go and get Terendalev. Prelate, surely there is somebody else here better suited to running errands. Oh, come on. Just do it. I'll get her. Terendalev. Has anyone seen Terendalev? Be quick about it before it's too late. Now, who are you? I don't remember seeing you before, and I have an excellent memory for faces. Uh, I think we might keep our mission a little bit secret, mainly because I don't know what it is. I came to the city on private business. <laughs> what private business would that be? There's only one business here in Canabras, and that's crusade business. All the rest... The crafters, the traders, the scholars, they all work to support the crusade effort. I think that's our healer. My dear prelate, please, for the sake of the festivities, stop interrogating this poor woman. She has been through enough already. Go on, I'll take care of her. <laughs> all right, as you wish. You are our protector and a dragon at that, so I shall defer to your wisdom. But be on your guard. I've been informed she was wounded near Canabras. That means the demons are prowling just outside the walls. And the city is crawling with their spies. Others may be able to relax on this holiday. But not you or I. Not the defenders of the city. So we're getting healed by a dragon? That's pretty cool. Pry loose the grudging grip of pain. Cast off the veil of suffering flesh. Let light and life go forth in triumph to repel the skulking shade of death. There. Oh, thank you for helping me. I accept your thanks. But my work is not yet done. Yeah, yeah. Who are you, though? My name is Terendalev. I am the protector of the city. 
Um, what happened to me? I do not know yet, and that troubles me. I am not entirely sure what the demons did to you. This wound is no ordinary injury, and it was inflicted by no ordinary weapon. I have rid you of your pain and restored your strength, but only time will allow you to heal fully. Okay, are you really a dragon? You don't believe me? Perhaps I should retake my true form and engulf this square with my ice breath to win your trust. <laughs> Pay no mind to my current guise. I appear this way when I walk among the people. I would hamper the festivities if I tried to attend in my true form. Yeah, it would be rather distracting. Anyway, can I go now? Certainly, but be careful. I have managed to get you back on your feet, but I have not healed you fully. Alas, sooner or later, your pain will return. But do not be discouraged. You will recover, I promise you that. Tomorrow, come to the cathedral and say that you are expected by Terendelev, protector of Canabres. We will find a way to help you. But for now, put this out of your mind and enjoy the festival. They are all too rare in this time of war, and merriment is one of the best medicines. Okay. So, we're about to get control, I think. Maybe. Yes. Okay, so this is us in control. Journal! What a quite Oh, we're getting many pop-ups. Uh, so it's telling us how to move and that we uh, uh, have a journal. Let's look at the journal first. So... Uh, Canabras is a city poised on the border between two worlds. On the one- I'm gonna get rid of that as well. Uh, on the one side, the ordinary world inhabited by ordinary people, and on the other, the world wounds, the demon's foothold on Galarian. Heroes from across the world flock to Canabras to aid the Crusader cause. The protracted war offers little cause for celebration, but today is the anniversary of the city's founding. For today, the city's main square has been cleared of marching troops and given over to the performers and carnival games. The townsfolk deserve the chance to forget about the bloodshed, if only for the day. Okay, so we have a couple of things to do. Sample the uh, special festival drink, throw a dart at a target, or hit a mannequin. Okay, well, let's have a look around. Uh, so is there anybody with a name? Yes, we can move the camera by doing this and rotate by doing that. Okay, cool. Anybody with a name? That's my first uh, step here. Uh, you have a name. Let's speak to you. So many happy faces. Days like this keep our hope alive. Who else have we got here? Uh, how about you, who did, decided not to help me? Characters and interactive objects. You can interact with various objects, such as doors and chests, by clicking um, the right mouse bumper on them. Okay, cool. Or right, right mouse button. A grubby peasants and their grubby diversions. Why did I even bother coming? Okay, well, we'll ignore you then for just now. Right, uh, Horgus Gwerm? Yes, yes, happy city day. And now step away, please. I do not wish for Horgus Gwerm to be seen next to you. Okay, well, we'll leave him alone then. Uh, who have we got over here? Ember. Happy city day, good people. Spare coin for a hungry belly? Um, okay, Let so we'll leave that be. Over this way. Doesn't appear to be anyone to speak to. How about this guy? Hello. They call this a celebration. This is but a, a paltry imitation of what goes on in my mansion on a dull, uh, tuller day evening. Oh, oh alright then. Well, so, sorry you're not having fun. Um, oh, hello. Everybody's letting their hair down. Everybody's drinking, having a good time, but the demon spies never let up. So that means no fun for me. All right, uh, who have we got here? Jana Aldori? I've been a crusader for five whole days already and I love it. The future's gonna be grand indeed. Is this the uh, drink? I think it might be. I love a drink, me, especially when it's, uh, the city's footing the bill. What do you say, an another round? Yeah, I mean, if it's free, just go for it. All right, what else have we got around here? Hello. On days like this, it's as if the war doesn't even exist. Desna, grant us peace. Oh, we've got the uh, dummy to That's hit over me. here. Let's do it.
And we're going to do it. Oh. Bam, right in the jaw. Ha ha ha. You call that punch? Let me show you how it's done. Um, what is that? Behold the Crusader Gods. Behold Iomane. You poor imposter. Your city will fall to me. Your followers will feed my hunger. Well, that took a sudden turn. Those creatures are terrifying. Although she's doing a good enough job at getting rid of them. Discari, Lord of Locusts, leave my city! Well, that's a bad sign. Discari's here. Discari himself. Blimey! One minute we had a dragon, the next, bam, she was gone. What are you gonna do? Fight or flee? If flee is your plan, let me help you out. I've got a scroll here with a good protective spell. Hey, Curse, lend me a weapon. I'll try and fight the demons. Sure thing. Here, take this. Best crossbow I've got. The person who made it said it could pierce the hide of a demon lord even. Well, hopefully we don't need to test that. Good luck! Try not to get eaten now! Well, at least we have a weapon. We really gonna try shooting it? Oh! A mortal gnat snaps its jaws at the Lord of Locusts. Behold, Iomade. Behold the death I saw. Well, I half expected them to just kill us, so this is an improvement. The silver dragon, Terendalev, the defender of Canabras, fell in battle. Hardly surprising, as she had to fight the demon lord Discari himself. He willed the land to part and swallow all who dared to stand in his way. But the war was still far from over. Well, we're alive, I think. Um, so, devoured by darkness, the festival organized to face the spirits of the city has ended in death and destruction. Not a great end for, uh, you know, a festival. Those lucky enough to survive ended up in the ancient catacombs beneath Canabras, catacombs in which, so the rumors say, live a brood of bloodthirsty humanoid creatures. Do we have to find some other survivors down here? Okay, well this seems like a good point to maybe have a look at our weaponry here. So we have this, uh, light crossbow which I'll equip. Uh, do we need arrows for that, or do we just have unlimited arrows? Well, given we don't have any arrows, I really hope that we have unlimited arrows. Um, yeah, right, let's go. Well, it looks like we have some on our back, or I guess bolts if it's a crossbow. Um, hello. A small woman with messy brown hair winces in pain, uttering a stream of curses through clenched teeth. She is pinned to the ground by a couple of weighty boulders. Hey, hey, stay with me. You actually got pretty lucky. You fell down into a black hole. But at least you're not on your own. You've got a great companion. Everything's going to be just fine. Tell me something. Can you feel your legs? I feel them all right. One say no to a little less feeling in them. My ankle's killing me, but my back seems to still be in one piece. My head, too. That's all that matters. Now, we're going to... Hey! Fancy meeting you down here. You're the one that Terendalev healed today, right? 
You aren't injured, are you? Will you help me get her out from under the boulders? Okay, so this tutorial here is basically saying that we can use skill checks and dialogue. That's fine. Um, why should we help her? I'm not going to ask that. Uh, so we can try athletics, knowledge world, or um, I can be evil. No. Um, knowledge world. So we have a plus four to this, so that seems good. We don't have to rely on brute strength for this. I'll try to find something to use as a lever. And she's out. Uh, you quickly find some suitable sticks and you free the wounded woman from the rubble without even breaking a sweat. Nice. And we can see the results if we uh, hover over it. So, we rolled a, si uh, a 16, so we got 20 overall on a difficulty class of um, 12, so we passed. So, that was good. We only needed to roll 8. Look at you! It's good to meet someone who uses brains first and brawn second. Ugh, damn it all. I think it's broken. Oh well, I've had worse. I'll just make myself a splint out of something. Thanks for the help. I wouldn't have lasted long on my own stuck under there. I'm Anevia Tirabade, of the Eagle Watch. I was overseeing security at the Festival Square. I thought maybe spies or demon worshippers might have something nasty planned. What actually happened though? Now that, I did not see coming. I don't think anyone could have been prepared for that. Well, I'm Sila, paladin by the grace of Iomade. I crossed the whole continent to come to Mendev and fight demons. And well, I've been fighting for a while now. I don't even want to think what might be happening up there in the city. Canabres has lost the protection of Terendelev, and of the Wardstone too, looks like. It's a relic without equal. It was placed here personally by Iomade's herald with the goddess's blessing. I really wanted to go see it, to pray before it. But there's no point worrying about a stone when there are people dying in the streets. So the Wardstone. The Wardstones are a chain of powerful artifacts keeping the World Wounds expansion at bay. The first and greatest in a chain was erected in the city of Canabres by the hand of the inheritor himself, a golden winged angel sent by the goddess of Iomade. Okay, so it makes sense why we're a little worried about it. Yeah, things are looking grim enough, but don't lose heart. Wardstone or no, dragon or no, Canabrace will never give in. Simple as. Well, we've introduced ourselves. What about you? Well, the very first thing I'm going to say is number four. I am led by destiny. I don't know why fate has brought me here, but I feel it was not by choice. Or by chance. Destiny is destiny. So it's either one or the other. Either fate is having a right old laugh at your expense, or Lady Luck sent you to us for a reason. Fate isn't what brought us here, and fate won't get us out either. Uh, now then, I'll hobble my way out of here somehow. The city ain't far, only 30 paces or so. That's if you're going straight up, of course. I'm afraid we're gonna have to go the long way round. To summarize, there are three of us, with five working legs, three pairs of decent hands, two clear heads, and one made of wood. <laughs> That's mine. Underground monsters beware! <laughs> <laughs> Anevia, you stay behind us. You're in no fit state to fight. If we do come up against anything, the two of us will try to manage on our own first. Well, onward! May the good deities lead us back to the open sky soon. Okay, we now have a party. So, we can select them, basically. Uh, so what did she have on her here? So we got um, a longsword, a heavy shield. We need to find ourselves a longsword at one point, because that's what we're proficient in, but, I mean, that's fine for just now. Probably better to have the tank with it. Uh, and then she has a short bow, and we're, we're fine for our crossbow, so we don't need to do any swapping. She also comes with a, a potion of shield of faith give her a bonus to AC if we need it. Okay. Uh, now. March on. Is this our, yeah, so our party formation appears to be fine for just now. She's at the front. That'll do. Right, uh, just see if there's any more loot around here. Uh, doesn't appear to be. No, so we'll just move on. Right, we'll let her go first as well. Ooh, loot. Wonderful. Uh, I will have all of that. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Cool. 
Um, so, uh, did we get ourselves a longsword? We did, right. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move that to secondary. Move that to first. So longsword will be good here. Uh, oh, well, I actually put the cold iron one on instead. Yeah, which does slightly more damage, I think. Is that right? Uh, no, it actually just has the quality cold iron. What does that do? Um, known for its effectiveness against demons and fey creatures. Oh, cool. Well, that's good then. Uh, we could put on a light shield. I think we have uh, a shield proficiency, don't we? Um, where would I find that? Marshall? Proficiencies. Uh, I'm sure we have a shield one, but I can't see it there, so that's fine. Uh, we will ignore it if I can't find it in about two or three more seconds. Uh, it might be under traits. Oh, no, there we go. Shield proficiency. Perfect. So we can use bucklers. Nice. So, or we can use them without a penalty. So we might as well put the light shield on as well. That seems good. Uh, torches. We'll stick one in there. Does that say ever burning? Okay. I assume that just means we don't have to light it. You already had a torch. So cloak of resistances. Uh, that's going to go on our tank. Definitely. Right. Uh, anything else that we need to look at? Uh, cold iron short spear. Can you use a short spear? Is it even better than a long sword? Um, it does not seem to be better, so I will leave it there for just now unless you need it. A long bow. Now, is that better than our bow? Um, can I switch which one I'm look comparing it to? A, no, I guess the only way to switch is to do that. Okay, compare. They're pretty much the same for right now, except uh, light crossbows and simple proficiency, which we have. There we go. So we'll do that again, put that one back on. Uh, flail, is that better than what you're using? Uh, no, unless we need to hit a different damage type, I guess. Yeah, so we'll move that one in, move that one in. Cool. Bunch of loot. Right. Turn it around. What have we got here? More loot. It is a Tendalev scale. Okay. So it's a usable item, one friendly creature within range. You restore life to a deceased party member. A raised creature has a number of hit points equal to its current hit dice. That's incredible. Yeah, okay, we'll have that. Yeah, love it. Right, let's move on. Uh, keep going. Oh! Who are you? Who's there? The fine apparel of this young half-elf woman is torn and sta stained with blood, dust and dirt. However, she holds herself with such dignity that you would be forgiven for thinking that you were in, a, you were at a high society party and not in the dank catacombs under the city. Her fingers grip her rapier hilt with confidence, ready to draw it at a moment's notice. At her feet lies a dead body, so mutilated that at first glance it's hard to tell if it's animal or human. Relax, friend. We're, we're not demons or cultists. Don't poke my eye out with that thing, all right? We fell down here during the attack. I'm Sila, that's Anevia, and this is our new friend. We're looking for a way back to the surface. Really? I'm so ever glad to hear it. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Camellia. I was also in the square when... when... I can scarcely believe it. How did all those demons get into the city? I thought... naively it now seems that the Wardstone protected us from attack. And Terendalev, I can't wrap my head around it. Not uh, many could withstand a strike from a demon lord, not even Terendalev, although I guess technically we did. I can't argue with that. We're fortunate to be alive, albeit underground. Daskari himself has come to Canabras. There's no mistaking that ugly mug. Terendalev tried to fight him, but what could she do against a near deity? Even the Wardstone was no help. Our city used to be protected by powerful forces, but now? We've seen how powerless they truly are. Henceforth, we shall have no one but ourselves to rely on, I suppose. Hmm, what happened to this poor man? Who is he? I don't know. He must have been in the square when disaster struck. I tried to revive him, but he was already dead, sadly. He didn't get these wounds from the fall. Be on your guard. Whatever killed him likely hasn't gone far. Are we not suspecting her? Hang on. I think I know him. His name's Aravashniel, the egghead from the library. 
He was a good lad, even if he was kind of stuck up. May his soul rest in peace. Hmm. Okay. Uh, tell me more about yourself. Who am I? Just an ordinary citizen who decided to take a stroll through the square on the day of the festival. But that's not what you wish to know, is it? You most likely wish to know whether I'll be a burden should you ask me to join your group. No need to worry about that. I can assure you that I am skilled with a rapier. And I also possess some knowledge of magic. Okay, do you want to join us? Certainly. Survivors should stick together. It's only sensible. Who knows what else could be prowling about in these caves. Alright, we need to keep moving. There must be a way back to the surface somewhere around here. That's right. It would be the height of foolishness to survive a demon attack only to perish under a pile of rubble. Let's see if this poor bloke has anything useful on him. Not to sound like a heartless brigand or nothing, but we kinda need all the supplies we can get right now. Very true. <laughs> Using abilities. A companion Camellia has the ability Cure Light Wounds. Alright, so we use it by clicking on it and then using it. Alright, um, there's our formation. Let me just check what we've got here. So, I kind of want to go with this one, but I want her to be at the front. Is that is that right now? Yeah, so that, that now means that if I was to uh, position us, Onwards. it would look something like this. Which seems about right to me. How's she looking for equipment? She also needs to heal a little bit. So she's got the cold iron rapier, which is fine. She also has finesse wielding on it, which works well because um, I guess she's going to have more decks. Yeah, she has a plus four bonus. What's this? Bone amulet. Mystical amulet in the shape of a snake made from bone. The pendant is a snake skull. Enchantments on this amulet allow the wearer to conceal their alignment. Oh. Okay. Uh, so undetectable alignment. Interesting. Camellia has both youth and talent in her favor. She tirelessly fights demons and cultists alike, but prefers to keep her distance from her fellow warriors. It's hard to tell if this is the arrogance inherent to some people of noble birth, or if she has another reason for keeping her companions at arm's length. It's always very suspicious when somebody comes along and is like, Yeah, I have an alignment, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. That's, that's just slightly suspicious. Uh, and then she gets some, she has a chain shirt, which gives her a plus for, yeah, allows her to have, yeah, so it gives her plus, uh, it gives her four armor class and then she's got a max of four dexterity, that's fine. Just checking ours, we're not blocked or anything, no, we're fine, okay. Uh, so we probably just want to heal her uh, and give her a torch. Yeah, that's, that seems fair enough. Right, so let's heal her because it's telling us to do so. Nice, that seemed to work. Right, um, anything on this guy? He has a masterwork dagger. What does masterwork mean um, when we're here? So let's have a look. Masterwork. Uh, wielding it provides a plus one enhancement bonus on attack rolls. Okay. Um, we don't really need it. Does she need it? Not really. Uh, we could give her a ranged weapon as well. We do actually have one. Can she use it? No, she can't use the longbow. Can we? We can use the longbow, uh, but we're not proficient in it because I don't think we have the martial proficiency group. But we might as well see whether she, yeah, she can use this one, so we should give it to her anyway. There we go. Uh, and then we'll stick that on there. That seems good to me. Yeah. So if we need to use ranged, we'll use that. I guess maybe we should be sitting on our second item set most of the time. Um, Where are we here? That's not how you do it. There we go. Perfect. So we'll sit on our oh, second item set and she'll sit on her second item set. Just because we're sitting behind a tank right now, so we might as well uh, act like it. Uh, lighting. In dark places, you might want to use a light spell or use a torch. Well, we have a light this spell, I believe. Yeah, so there we go. little uh, light spell. Actually, when I think about it, I probably should have cast it here. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Cool. So, that makes sense. Ooh. Ja a young giant centipede. I'm just going to run at it. We will be victorious. Combat. When combat begins, the game is paused. The pause is convenient to give orders to your characters. Uh, yes, we're currently in turn-based mode. My plan is to stay in turn-based um, for most of the early game. Maybe go to real-time with pause in the mid-game, and then chances are we'll have to go back to turn-based for the end of the game anyway, because turn-based is most useful when you're worried about dying quickly, and that tends to happen early or late. In the middle of the game, 
doesn't really matter so much. Right. So who are we right now? So we're currently uh, Sila. So I think I'm just going to go for an attack, right? I don't think there's another thing I need to do here. I could fight defensively if I wanted to, but I think attacking makes sense. We missed. Can you, you can't do it again? We could switch this on afterwards, I suppose. Yeah. Let's switch that on and then um, end our turn, probably. Yeah, we could try smiting, but there's no real point. Yeah, end turn. You can also speed up the animations of the enemies in real in uh, turn base, so uh, it might be worth doing if we want to, or speed up your own animations. Uh, that's a lot of enemies. Oh my lord, how many centipedes are there? Okay. Uh, you got anything for us here? I actually kind of feel like we have to switch to this already, and then attack. Oh, dead. Cool. Uh, we don't have anything I want to use right away, so I'm going to switch to this and attack. Forwards. Nice. Two kills. Back to our... our uh, I actually don't know the what class error. she is. I should look Guide at the classes my of my blade. companions as well. Uh, enter. Nice. Another miss. Another miss. Perfect. Walk up and hit it. Your blood. Well, that's not good. Um, guess I'll just end your turn. Hit it. We didn't kill it, but at least we did some damage. Hey, still getting misses. Uh, attack. Great. All right, we finally got a kill. End turn. Nice miss. Kill the one next to you. Not quite, but that's all right. Uh, end turn. Kill it. Won't falter. All right. <laughs> Lots of misses. That's okay. Kill this one. Never mind. Okay, another miss. Attack it. Go for their hearts. Okay, well, <laughs> we're doing well so far. Okay. This is a lot of turns and misses from both sides. We rolled a one. Wonderful. Yeah, all right. Kill. We finally rolled above a... T <laughs> we only have to roll above an eight to hit these guys, by the way. We can do it. All right, 11 on that one, but still. Anyway, kill it. Hey, we did it, eventually. <laughs> Took us a while, but we did it. Right, uh, moving forward. Oh, we should switch I back to our ranged ready. weapons. Just in well? case. Although it seems like we can switch on turn one of combat for no penalty, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, loot. Um, yeah, we'll have that. There's no real benefit to switching to it right now, but we'll have it. Right. More loot over here. We'll have that. Oh, it's another scale. Oh, so it's another res. Okay, well, that's nice. They give us two reses right off the uh, bat. Turn based mode. It's telling us about turn based mode. Okay, kind of got that. We know what's going on here. Cool. Um, two giant flies. It did actually hit us, but I think we got the fortitude. Yeah, we saved the fortitude save on it. Okay. Um, shoot this one. The spirits demand your blood. Well, that was awful. Uh, can we, we don't have a heal. Well, we can't use the heal because it's we've already used an action. Okay. Um, might switch to melee and then end turn. Well, auto ended turn, but that's fine. Uh, again, I think I'm going to switch to melee. And then attack. Forwards. All right, we only needed to roll a nine and we managed to fail. Good, good job. Um, hit it. The light take you. Hey, we actually hit it. That was nice. We could use Smite Evil on it as well if we wanted to. Um, oh, I guess I would have had to have done that before the, uh, yeah, before our attack. Hey, okay, she joined in on this fight. Right. Um, hit it. Hey, we did some damage. Nice. Next we one. Killed it. Wonderful. 
Right, you are going to heal uh, Sila. That really um, wasn't as impressive as I would have liked the heal to have been, if I'm honest, but okay. Uh, let's head up this path first. Um, let's let's do an attack outside of combat. Yeah, you. Um, how do I do the attack? So just attack. We cannot be defeated. Wonderful, great first move. Does it give us higher initiative at least? Kind of. You are today's sacrifice. Wonderful. You're gonna sit here. Wait for the fly to get all the way over. I didn't actually check whether I could have held action. I should check that next time. Oh, it's dead. Uh, I guess there's another one down here. Is there a way of holding? It's that one. That is not what I was wanting to do. Uh, I don't think there's a way of holding action. But I'm just going to end. Ah, there's a, there's a uh, spitting giant centipede. And there's another one. So, yeah, I was wondering what that effect was on us there, but I guess it doesn't matter because it's gone now. Alright, melee. Hit it. Nice, we actually did hit it. Hit it. Oh, wonderful. Right, uh, enter. Cool. That went pretty well. Right, continuing in this direction. Loot. Rainbow quartz and flame tongue. It's a uh, cooking ingredient. Okay. Well, ooh, monitor lizard. So I'm gonna test what the quick save button is. Hopefully it's the right one. All right, it was F5 as in every other game, except for the one or two where it's quick load and then you uh, feel silly about yourself for a second. Right, attack it. Do not fear. Do not hey, we her. actually did damage to it. Nice. Um, yeah, shoot it. Strike with all your might. Okay. Um, then end your turn. Well, at least we did damage to it on our first try. Right, um, melee weapon. Hit it. Go for their hearts. Nope. Okay. Shoot it. Can do it. Just complete miss. Wonderful. And hit it. Nice. Okay. It didn't hit us. I'll cut you wide open. All right. Next person. Wonderful. Hey. It looks like it's easier to hit with melee attacks. So maybe I should be trying that. We saved against poison, which is nice, but we are almost dead. Just kill it. Yeah, um... What's this one? Spirit weapon enhancement? Uh, no. But we maybe should have used that. End turn. Right, back to us here. Uh, I'm gonna go for melee weapon. Gonna move in and attack it. We got it. Nice. Okay. Uh, we can loot the lizard. Nice. We'll ha we'll skin that and collect it. Um, do we we don't have any healing? That's kind of a problem. The other thing I wanted to check was what class these guys are. Uh, class. So she's the shaman spirit hunter. Okay. Uh, I have no idea what we're meant to do with that, but we'll look into it more later. And you're a paladin. Okay. Yeah, I kind of guessed with the uh, smite evil that you'd be a paladin. We'll again look into these more uh, when we're a little bit more settled. What's on your mind? Right. Uh, I don't have any like small heals, do I? Uh, no, not really. We can give ourselves one temporary hit point for a minute. It's probably not enough. Uh, I think that probably means that we want to make you a ranged character for just now. I'll make my own. Legend. Um. Yeah. Switch you back to that as well. Right. Head in here. Okay, so this is leading somewhere new. Yeah, this is definitely a new place. So I want to head back and check what's going on down this other path. Because I think if that's going in a new direction, then this must be leading to uh, a dead end. Okay. They will break against our resolve. Uh, yeah, your first move is to... Yeah, I think I'm going to shoot and run. Your blood. Nice. Now uh, run back as far as you can go. 
Cool. End turn. Ooh, one that we couldn't see is coming up here. Sela, attack. Wonderful. Just explode it and take a step or two forward just to uh, dissuade them off of our weak person. Right. Shoot. Another one down. Hey, this is much more like it. Okay, shoot it. You are today's sacrifice. End turn. Kill it. The Guide my Wonderful. Blade. That seems to have gone pretty well. Uh, still looking for like healing of any kind, but that's all right. Hey, cure light wounds. Also, we got some. Uh, yeah, we got some more stuff. Nice. So what are these? Um, bracers of plus one. Currently she has, uh, oh, currently we have, a engraved lucky bracers, which gives us a luck, uh, plus one luck bonus to AC. Okay, so it's just straight up worse than that. Yeah, so these are just straight up worse. But we also get a luck bonus to reflex, will, and fortitude saving. So if I give this to you, will this actually increase your armor class? Like most bonuses, an armor bonus does not stack with armor bonuses from different sources, such as bonuses from wearing armor or from mage armor. So this will not actually increase our armor. Yeah, so that does not increase our armor class because we're already wearing armor. Uh, so it'll be the same here as well. Yeah. Yeah, so that would not increase our armor class. Or would it? If I take this off? Yeah, that lowers our armor class. But th why does this apply at all then? Because that is actually changing our armor class. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, that shouldn't be doing that. Oh wait, no, it's lowering our armor class. That's actually making it worse. Oh, it's because we're moving into medium. That's what's happening to our armor class there. Yes, yeah, so these are not worth using. Oh, you already had a health potion on you. Oh, use it. Nice. Uh, here, have another one. Then you, here, have another one. I'm just gonna use them rather than uh, be like, hmm. But what if we, what if we could use it later for something better? Nah. All right. When we can have that scroll, because we can use scrolls. Okay, that seems fine. Uh, everybody, over here, back up to the other side. Yeah. So we want to head all the way over here. Perfect. It's not a way of speeding up time, is there? No. I did see in the options menu there is an option for make you run quicker when you're outside of combat, which I have on. So yeah, it seems like it's working. Hello. No, I can't just walk away. It's got to be here somewhere. You struggle to make out the man's features in the gloom. As soon as he steps into the circle of light, however, you realize that you have never encountered a creature like this before. The stranger looks like the work of a, viv a vivisectionist who attempted to stitch together a lizard and a man. When do what? Hello. Lan, did you find it? Who is that? The do-gooders here to save our mongrel souls, no doubt. Wait, they might know what's going on up there. Let's just tell them, demons are laying waste to Kenebres. If things are as bad as you say, then we all have to hurry. You didn't come from the direction of the shield maze. Damn it. I couldn't care less about what's happening on the surface, but the maze. I realize that you guys have your own troubles, but we need to be in Canabres. People are dying up there. Please, show us the way out. Um, who are you? Tieflings? Tieflings are the descendants of people who sullied themselves by mating with demons. Our ancestors would never sink that low. We are the underground crusaders, the children of the crusade's finest. Sadly, underground crusaders is a bit of a mouthful, so people usually just call us mongrels. Oh, well, you know, that's not very nice of them. <laughs> you just love repeating that, don't you, Lan? Mongrels. That's what the uplanders call us. But we call ourselves Neethers. No matter what you call us, it's not going to stop our horns, hooves, or tails from growing. I've never heard of underground crusaders before. In Canabras, they're called mongrels. 
People say that they come up to the surface at night and eat anyone foolish enough to wander alone after midnight. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I thought you guys were just a tale to tell kids at night. Huh. That's human gratitude for you. Our forefathers suffered the consequences of demonic corruption, all to protect Mendev and Golarion. And for what? So we could become monsters used to frighten children. <sighs> Every mongrel has their own take on it. Our chief, for example, thinks of us as something like a reserve military force. He thinks we're standing by until the moment we're needed, and when we emerge on the surface and save the day, all the people will see how good we are and they'll love us for it. Yeah, he leaves that last part out when he talks about it, of course, but it's easy enough to read between the lines. Okay, I understand. Uh, so where are we? What is this place? This is the hall where we remember the glory of our forebears. Sorry about the mess. Uh, it doesn't usually look like this, trust me. Sometimes we even wipe the dust off the exhibits. This is where the relics of the First Crusaders are displayed. Our lives are short, our glories are quickly forgotten. But this place helps us to remember that we are just as worthy as anyone else. And that our lives are not lived in vain. I was gonna say it looks a little bit like it's broken down and that it's not really maintained very well, but then I was like, that's probably because the uh, ceiling shook and a bunch of rocks fell down on it. Yeah, that's probably why it looks a little bit broken. Huh, the first crusaders? You've been down here that long? That's crazy. Uh, what are you doing here? That's none of your bit. We're looking for a holy sword. It was here, in the center, sticking out of a rock. The sooner we find it, the better. Some kids from our tribe took off for the shield maze. They figured it had collapsed, and now it's their time to go up to the surface, like all the legends foretold. Except they don't have a clue what's waiting for them up there. They're not fighters. And Sul, the chief of our tribe, is dead set against it. He says that now isn't the time for the underground crusaders to take up arms. If we get the holy sword, we might be able to change the chief's mind. <laughs> it's a fool's errand. None of us will be able to hold the sword, let alone use it to save anyone. It's not an ordinary weapon. It's made from righteous heavenly flame, and will burn anyone who touches it. Do you think you're special, Lan? I just noticed heavenly is, uh, like we can hover over it. Is there a special thing for heaven? Oh, it's just telling you what heaven is. Fair enough. Well, we don't need to worry about that right now. I'll pick it up with my teeth and tie it to my hand if I have to. It doesn't matter. An angel's sword and a troop of stalwart mongrels will be able to work a minor miracle. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, you're still here, Wendu, which means that deep down, you know it's possible. Wendug uh, shrugs and turns away. Maze, does it really lead to the surface? Yes. There are other ways up. But they are far from here, and after the earthquakes, there's a good chance they've collapsed. But the maze... There's a legend among our people that when the walls of the maze fall, that will be a signal for us, the underground crusaders, that the time has come to go up to the surface and fight the demons in the final confrontation. <laughs> Until then, the people say the maze is shielding us from taking rash actions. I'm the only one in our whole tribe to have been in the maze. And even I don't know if it's true. But the further I went in the maze, the fresher the air became. That means that it really must lead to the surface. When the ceiling and walls started shaking, the young ones in our tribe lost their heads. They figured the maze was going to collapse, so it was time to go up to the surface. They grabbed whatever weapons were on hand and ran off toward the maze. They think the maze is no longer a danger to them. They've been listening to Wendwog too much. Don't try to blame this on me. 
Yes, I told them that our people are capable of making our way through the maze. In the future. But I always told them to wait until I had made a map of all the maze's dangers. I warned them a hundred times. But it was no use. My words just went in one ear and out the other. Okay. A sword of holy flame. How did it wind up down here? It came here with its owner. A long time ago. 50,000 gongs to be precise. 70 years ago, in Uplander time. 50,000 gongs ago, our forebears found a dead angel here, along with the bodies of his comrades. The tribe gave them a dignified burial, and they were laid to rest with their weapons. But the flaming angelic sword was stuck in a rock, and no one was able to pull it out. It burned to the touch, like real fire. So the rock was placed over the angel's grave. It should be here somewhere. I think I remember from uh, the beta of this game that we worked out that 50,000 gongs meant it was like a gong was a day. Um, but I might be wrong there. Maybe the angel will dig himself out and find the sword for us. That might be our best shot in this chaos. Lan, watch your tongue. Hmm. We'll find the sword faster if we work together. I'll help you. Thanks. An extra pair of eyes can only help. This sword will be easy enough to spot. It looks, uh, swordy. <laughs> help us, and in return, we'll get you out of here. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of how I expected the sword to look. Probably on fire as well. Are you going to tell me that? <laughs> <laughs> now we're talking. Let's get to work. It's a good thing we all bumped into each other, isn't it? What, you want to find the sword quickly so the underground monsters bring you back to the surface? So be it. Okay, so we've got some hidden objects around here. Just judge by the tutorial. Uh, because we uh, have to automatically pass a perception skill check. So let's have a look. Ooh, lore religion? Our time to shine. Statue of an unknown knight. Uh, did we pass? It doesn't even... Uh, yeah, we did. Cool. Um, Statue of an unknown knight. The technique is crude, but the figure was clearly crafted with genuine feeling. Judging by the style of the armor, the knight is from the First Crusade. So it's lining up. Oh, we can loot it now? Oh, yeah. Take that. Definitely. Also, we got... Ah, that'll be the hidden object. Let's grab it. Uh, a copper ring. Okay. What's this one? The room looks like an improvised museum, or perhaps some kind of temple. Okay. Follow me. Set ourselves up. Walk a little bit along. I found yeah, something. Yeah. I see it. Uh, three grinding stones. What about over here? Has this got anything else on it? Nope. Uh, is there any other way out of here, or are we going What's across that? that? Yeah. Oh, it's the sword. Well, that was easy. I found it. Just wait and see if it has voice acting. Don't think it does. Okay. Day 16, month Erodius, um, the 8th month, year 4715. A strange flash pierces the gloom, and Namin De feels drops of searing blood run down her chest. The wound healed by Terendelev reopens and weeps scarlet, but there is no pain or weakness. A hazy scene appears, a cave chamber. This one, or another one entirely. Naminde's heartbeat quickens, and a stream of thoughts suddenly bursts into her mind. Thoughts that clearly belong to another. Treachery! They betrayed me, trapped me, and stabbed me in the back. My trusted allies, my treasured friends, the people I swore to protect. The people for whom I descended from heaven and came to this turbulent mortal world. There they are, up ahead in the gloom of the cave. What are they waiting for? Are they afraid to draw any closer? Do they believe I'm about to die from their traitorous blows? Next to me, a quiet moan. A girl with a golden braid lies on the rocks, clutching her slashed side. She refused to join with the traitors and paid dearly for it. I could have tried to run, but I will not. 
Whilst I still have the strength, I must. While recognizing the foreign origin of these thoughts, Naminde intuits that she can control them somehow. Let's try to heal the wounded girl. A spark of healing magic illuminates the eerie, murky scene before Naminde. The wounded girl opens her eyes and whispers, Lariel, you, you said that everything was going to change soon. You said that you and the other warriors of heaven would be leaving us on a grand mission to stop the demons forever. Is that true? The frenzy of foreign thoughts comes faster and faster like a rushing river. The images flash by one after another. A priestess in colorful robes observing the stars. A young female paladin praying, clutching her glowing sword. A majestic, golden-winged angel gazing into the distance, his face covered by a helmet, but his voice ringing clear. Only if you're willing, and only if you're ready. There is no going back. Then don't waste your strength healing me, the girl whispers. Your mission is more important. You take care. It is near. There, in the vision, the darkness in the cave stirs into motion. Something massive appears from within its depths. A vague shadow, an outline, a nightmare come to life. A wave of odious chirruping and rustling emanates from the shadow. A, the sound piercing like hot irons lancing through flesh and bone. The traitors fall to their knees before the shadow in reverent ecstasy, and the wounded girl thrashes in her death throes. So we, as Naminde, can fight off the illusion, for will, but we knew how to resist the malign influence such as this, no matter its origin, use our arcane knowledge, or we can do nothing to fight off the illusion. Well, I think we're going to go for the arcane knowledge check, given it's DC 10 and we have uh, a plus 10 to it, so... Yeah, we need to roll a 1 and a d20. Should be possible. The force of the attack, uh, though originating in a vision, is terrifying, but Naminde is stronger. She shakes off the pain and torpor, but alas, the one who sent the vision cannot claim the same. He is broken and exhausted. A monstrous shadow emerges from the murk of the cave, but it is not real. It exists only in the strange vision or memory but the thrill of fear it uh, provokes is more than real. The shadow's features starkly resemble those of Descari, the terrifying demon lord. In a movement as swift as thought itself, the monster's hand is wrapped around the throat of the one they call Lariel. The foolish angel struggling on the rocks, like a fly with its wings torn off, inotes the shadow. Its voice changes as it moves, shifting from a quiet whispering to a sonorous shout, becoming young, then old, then quavering. Where is your goddess, Angel? Where is her self-assured herald? How is it that you are dying here alone, so far from the light of your heaven? Oh wow, that is a cool uh, scene there. A strange calm envelops the thoughts of the one called Lariel. He recognizes who stands before him, and he knows he will never bow down before this enemy. The flaming sword flares to life in his hand, Bright, pure, flickering with multicolored sparks like a sunbeam through stained glass. Slash. The blade slices through the demonic creature's flesh, and the monster recoils with a howl, releasing his grip on Lariel's throat. The angel falls back, heavily on the rocks. His vitality is ebbing, but his pride remains undimished. He grips the sword, and with his last burst of strength, plunges it into the rock. The Minde senses the vision is fading, the rush of thoughts diminishing, like a river running dry. The last thing she hears is this. You will kill me, monster, this I know. But one day, someone will come here and raise up my sword. They will raise it up and... Punish evildoers and traitors. The vision disappears, vanishing in a burst of colors. The Mende does not hear the final words, but she seems to complete the thought, taking it to heart. The words fly from her lips, and with them, something else. The heat blazing in the Minde's uh, chest fades away. The edge of the scarlet wound close, leaving not even a scar behind. Looking down, the Minde sees the flaming sword in her hand, or rather its outline, the memory of what the sword looked like. With a final surge of warm, soothing light, the sword vanishes, and the light is drawn into her hand. The Minde senses that it will return. All she need do is call it. So 
we've absorbed the sword. Hey, are you all right? You were kind of glowing just now. Sela kneels before the light, offering up a prayer to Aimode. That, that was it. The light of heaven, but how? What did you do with it? Where did it go? I think I saw the memories of Lariel, the angel who died here. Lariel? That really was Lariel? The angel from the legends. The ancestors even got his name right on the gravestone. The chief will be thrilled. I kind of get your f I kind of get the feeling your ancestors killed him. You. Thousands of gongs and no one's been able to touch it and now you, an ordinary creature of flesh and blood no different to us, get the sword and start talking about visions. Do I sense a, pa a little bit of jealousy in there? Now, now, Wendawag, don't be a sore loser. She is clearly different from us. The sword appeared before her, along with the angel's name and all that other stuff. Because she doesn't carry our mongrel taint. Heaven doesn't give a damn how special we are. We're born with evil inside us. Heaven doesn't need to know any more than that. I know you're willing to tear anyone apart to uphold our people's honor, but... You and Sol, you just refuse to face the truth. We are the way we are because our ancestors' bodies were corrupted by the Abyss. It does the same thing to plants and animals. There's nothing heroic or special about it. It doesn't make us better, and it doesn't make us worthier. So, this is... Uh obviously leading to a mythic path, as it's saying here. Mythic paths, if you didn't watch the character creation video, we went over it in a little bit more detail, but they're basically paths you can go down that give you different story options, and they give you new quests and new abilities and all sorts of stuff. I'm going to try and avoid going down the angel one because there's another one that I'm aiming for, but I suspect that this conversation is going to lead to us pressing the three button. Anyway, you saw it too? The traitors, the dying girl? It's only us here. Your group, you, me, Wendu, and the light of heaven that sort of got, uh, sucked into you. Any chance you can whip it out again? We do kind of need it. Sorry, I crack jokes when I get nervous. And when I'm upset. And when I'm happy. A anyway, what I said, it came out wrong. We need to bring you to Chief Sull. You can show everyone the light of heaven, we'll rally the tribe and go into the maze and we'll get back our kin. And what if she can't make it happen a second time? What then? The tribe will just say we're crazy and turn its back on us. Well, I guess I'm pressing the button. It seems I can control it. That is just... Wow, I mean, that's amazing! Heaven has truly blessed you! This power is the most majestic thing I've ever seen in all my life. Is this what the sun is like, Lan? Yes, it's similar. But this light is more... golden? Chief Sol needs to see this. Now that we have the power of angels on our side, he can't say no. He'll have to assemble a troop to storm the maze. You Uplanders care about your kids, right? Help us save ours. Without them, we won't survive. And then, the perils of the maze won't be so bad if we go together. We'll make our way through it and find the way to Canabras. Well, lead us to your chief and I'll decide uh, if I'm going to help you or not. Let's go. We'll take the short route. Well, the only route, really. Can't hide from me. <laughs> oh, they're now in our party. And we got some loot, I think. Loot's running us over here. No, what is that? Oh, I'd like to grab the loot. Thanks. Yeah, we'll grab that. Grab that. So I believe the only route is over that rubble. I'm just checking Marshall. there's nothing else over here. Ah, oh, there's more loot. There we go. Right. So, what I think we're going to do is we're going to end the episode there. Thank you. Oh, 
I didn't notice she was limping the whole time, but with the increased movement speed, it looks kind of funny. Anyway, um, with that, I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'm planning on putting out another episode immediately after this one, so if you enjoyed it and want to see more, there should be another one there for you. And if you want to see more in the future, you could subscribe, you could like the video, you could comment, all that sort of stuff helps with search ranking and it helps the channel grow and the series grow and uh, just is generally quite healthy for the channel. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.